everyone. Welcome to LA Storytime. Today we are talking about the golden age of Hollywood, like about 2008 to 2010, when it was all about red carpets and award shows, entertainment news. Everyone was obsessed with celebrities. There was no social media yet, so we didn't really get to see anybody behind the scenes. But I was there. You guys, this still kind of blows my mind. I'm not someone who looks to the past very often or even thinks about these experiences that much because I'm so far removed from it now. I live in Las Vegas and kind of just sit in my office and do my fun YouTube stuff stuff. But back in the day, I was right on the front lines of the red carpet with celebrities and as part of e-entertainment. It was incredible. There was one place and one place only where I wanted to work, where I wanted to live, where I wanted to be for the rest of my life. That was Los Angeles, California. I grew up watching, you know, Saved by the Bell, Sweet Valley High, all the shows where the cool kids hopped in their Jeep and drove to the beach in Southern California. And that was the only place that I ever intended to live and go after college. So in my last semester, when I needed an internship, E was the one and only place that I applied. That was the only place I was going. And it was, of course, a crapshoot. Back in the day, those online websites, does everybody remember this, right? You wanted to get an internship or a job or even applying to schools, everything. It was online and that was like new and cool. And I would log into the little careers website um, at the E Entertainment. And um, that was probably a site that I visited every single day, multiple times. You would submit your resume and then you would check up on it. Has anyone looked at it? Does anyone give a crap that I want to give my all here at this place at E Entertainment and be an intern? I remember kind of waiting. There was like a thing. You submitted your internship in the fall, maybe. So it's sort of been fall of 07. And then you just kind of wait. I'm not good at waiting. I don't have a whole lot of patience. So I scoured the internet. This was a lot harder to do back in the day. I think Google was a thing. I've always been a Googler. That's how I do all of my news reports and stuff now is by my skills of scouring the internet. So I somehow found the email address for a guy named Miles who coordinated all the internships at E back in the day. And I sent him an email like, hey, did you guys get my resume? I'm really desperate and I really want to be there and I would die. Uh, I would die, live and die and and whatever for you to be there. Please, please, please. And got an email back. I was so excited. They decided, they told me, uh, well, we have decided that you were a good match with this one department. And someone's going to call you from this department and interview you. Ooh, you guys. I'm what, 21 years old at this point? And E! Entertainment is going to call me and interview me? Like, wait, I'm trying to be there and interview for them. Anyway. So I had a phone call with who I later learned was the executive assistant for the producer of E! True Hollywood Story. It went great. She, We got off the phone and she called me back just minutes later. I remember it was late in the day on a Friday. That's so like E! that they're doing these things. At the last minute at that time, it was late in the day on a Friday and she called me back almost immediately after we had our initial interview. And she said, I just talked to my boss. I love you. We want you to come here and be an intern at E! True Hollywood Story. You guys, I died. Uh, I was so freaking excited. Of course, in my attempts to manifest this, I had ordered t-shirts from the E! Entertainment website that said like, THS and, you know, had a big E with the exclamation point on the front. And they coincidentally had arrived to my apartment that day. So I put on my little True Hollywood story shirt uh, after getting this huge news was so freaking out of my mind excited and went down to the campus rec center to tell my boyfriend at the time, my husband now, who I've been with for 19 years, that I was going to Hollywood, baby. Um, <laughs> I don't remember a whole lot after that. I know I told my parents, obviously called them right away, and this was going to be a huge thing. How does a girl from a small town in Minnesota even figure out how to live in Los Angeles? I didn't know how long it was going to be for. I hoped to stay, of course. I was going to be done with school after this. And the whole planning of it, you know, I want to live at the Palazzo, like the girls on the hills that cost $4,000 a month for a studio. I'm sure it's way more than that now. And I was kind of at a loss. But in part of my planning for this, uh, which I had three weeks to do, literally the day that they called me, it was exactly a month till I was going to be starting my internship in LA, in West LA at 5750 Wilshire Boulevard. But I found an apartment, went month to month. It was ridiculously expensive. It was 
to this day, besides the place I live in now, probably the nicest apartment I've ever lived in. And it was just the only option because I wasn't going to have a car. And this was really close within walking distance to the studio. I will never forget when we we flew in, got in the taxi, when it was time to be there. And I, and I said, like, gave him the address of my new apartment. And the taxi driver said, where is that? And I was like, Oh my God, I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, disaster already from the first second that I stepped off the plane at LAX. Right. But everything was so incredible. Those first few days, I remember we got settled in at our apartment and went uh, to get some food. We're sitting there at the counter and saw the E Entertainment news van pull out of the building and like go off to cover their story. And I thought that was just the absolute most exciting thing that I had ever seen in my entire life. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. My first few days in Los Angeles were especially memorable because I remember thinking, I have seen a celebrity every single day, the first three days, every single day. Is this what it's going to be like? Is this my life now? Uh, day one, I went to my internship. We'll get there, of course. But after I got off, we took one of those bus tours, which were all the rage then. They're still cool now. You should go on the TMZ one. It's fun. But we saw Catherine Heigl, who was such a huge deal back then, at Le Petit Fleur, this fancy restaurant in Beverly Hills. And that was so that was sighting for day one. Um, day two was former Miss USA, Tara Connor, who was there at the E studios with her little suitcase. She was coming in for an audition. I believe, uh, she was trying to do entertainment news back then. And I remember sitting in the lobby with her and just being like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm sitting in the same lobby as Miss USA. She's here to audition. They are so I'm going to be next on the audition list. They are so going to put me on TV. I'm here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just that feeling now, I really, you guys, my, of course, ultimate dream was to be on camera at E. I idolized Juliana Rancic, and I really thought that this internship at E! True Hollywood Story as, you know, logging tapes all day was my in. I, there was no doubt in my mind that I was going to show up there and they were going to say, oh, Christy Marie Olsen you belong in front of the camera. Here is your dressing room. Here is your makeup artist. We'll see you on the red carpet. I guess I would have been shocked that that didn't happen immediately, but I was too busy like having fun and actually having all the experiences, the cool things that I did get to do while I was there. And speaking of, on day three, none other then Kendra Wilkinson from The Girls Next Door. We were up on the third floor. I remember right where my desk was back in the day. It was actually very near the president at the time's office. And Kendra came in with one of her managers. This was towards the very end of The Girls Next Door. And she was negotiating her contract or signing her contract, I believe, for like season five. And Kendra was with a, a manager type person who, this is very important. I would not have realized all of this then. I know so much more now and can have such a better perspective on everything. But back then, I know now that the manager that Kendra was with would have been somebody that E would have set her up with. Right. It would have been somebody that the network approved of that was really behind the scenes working with the network to make sure that everything went off without a hitch and negotiations and all that kind of stuff. And I remember Kendra saying to this manager, right, but like this is what's good for me. Right. Like like this is this is what's best for me, for Kendra. Right. And the guy just being like, yeah, 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 girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what's good for you. I'm here for you, babe. You know, finger in a that whole thing. <laughs> A lot of that in Hollywood. And um, at the time, I just thought it was so cool that I was like privy to this conversation between one of the girls next door and her manager. And now I just think like, ooh, there was so much more going on there that I didn't understand. That's part of the reason why I want to sit down and tell these stories because I can make such better connections now. I think there are some definitely some lessons to be learned, especially once I get on the red carpet and start interviewing people. You know, this is a, a kind of a great way to look back and um, figure out what was really going on there, right? So first three days, saw celebrities every single day. I thought I could die happy right now. But as far as the actual internship went, so I was in the E! True Hollywood Story Department, which if you remember at that time was mega, mega. And this was kind of right before it exploded with more. They started to do while I was there, True Hollywood Story Investigates, True Hollywood Story Nightmares. It was a really cool place with really creative people and some of these awesome producers 
that I got to kind of learn from and oversee because I wasn't part of one of the production teams actually working on one of the shows. I remember they had just done the E! True Hollywood story of the Kardashians when I got there, and that was blowing up um, THS because the Kardashians were new and cool. And that was a big thing. So I wasn't working specifically on one of the, um, productions. However, I was part of a group who sat down and watched Kim's tape all together. Just a bunch of girls sitting at a desk being like, this is ridiculous. Why does she keep saying that? You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but instead of working on one of the shows, I, I was kind of belonged to everyone and they all needed help. And the thing that they needed help with was logging tapes. So when I pictured this glamorous life as an E intern, I didn't really realize that I was going to be sitting at a computer typing out all day long. You're just sitting, you're watching interviews, you're watching footage, you know. Um, then Kim says, okay, let's go. <laughs> I mean, it, it's really, it's that boring. It's it's not like, yes, you we did have access to all the behind the scenes stuff, all the footage. I, but I mean, I couldn't go into the data system and like, watch, um, you know, discarded scenes from the Kardashians or anything like that. But there was full sit down interviews, anything they had ever done with a celebrity and all the content that they got at award shows and stuff. You could watch the raw tapes on your computer. Um, I mean, I guess we weren't really supposed to be poking around where we didn't have business, but nobody really cared. I think E seemed like such this major thing back then. I and everyone I knew my age who was in journalism, wanted to work in entertainment news, and E! was the one, right? It was E! News, it was the Daily Ten, it was live from the red carpet, eventually Fashion Police. That was the place to be and the job to have. But really, it was a bunch of people like me, interns and people who just got hired after doing their internships. A lot of 22-year-olds just trying to figure out life in LA. We were all transplants, trying to figure out how to work and have a real job. It really felt more like I was never in a sorority, but <laughs> I think it felt more like kind of an extension of the college experience with like a few adults running around that were higher ups, <laughs> right? So it was just a lot of fun. This cool atmosphere. So even though I was just sitting at my computer all day long because of the like the access to the tapes and all the other fun things, we had Bagel Thursdays, right? Free bagels and cream cheese. I was just tickled to be there. And then a few weeks after I started my internship, award show season kicked in, right? Oh my gosh, you guys. If I, I wish there were words to describe how major all of this was to me, how cool it was, how excited I was, what a huge deal it was. Perhaps if you could rewind yourself back to that time, you remember what a big deal all the red carpets and the award shows were. But the fun, really cool thing that the interns got to do during award show season was um, participate in the rehearsals, acting like celebrities. Okay, so picture this, you guys. We're um, like on the red carpet for like the SAG Awards is the first one that I remember. It's a few days before everybody's there setting up. They're literally rolling out the red carpet. You know, E always had a bunch of spots they were setting up and things they were doing. And one of the days, like the day before, they would have the hosts come in, Juliana, you know, Debbie, Kat, Sal, or all the big names back then. Um, this was right I believe when Ryan first started coming around, Ryan Seacrest. But so all the hosts would come like the night before and we would do a few hours of rehearsal. And literally the interns would have a piece of paper hung around their neck on a string, something that became my job later, <laughs> more on that, making those little signs. And we would all be walking around with Angelina Jolie, you know, on our chest, Kirsten Dunst, uh, whoever were the huge stars and the nominees and stuff back then, the interns would stand in a line and go up to Juliana when she was ready. And Juliana would say, you know, hey, Angelina, congratulations on your nomination tonight. How are you feeling? And then stick her E! Entertainment microphone in an intern's face. And you got to like stand there and be with Juliana and feel like you were part of the red carpet. And it was literally just the absolute most wonderful, like surreal thing that I had ever done. And I just thought that, again, I was the coolest person on the entire planet. <laughs> we did a few of those all throughout award show season uh, with the rehearsals where we got to go and really see what went on behind the scenes. There was a whole live events department, but I kind of got to... Um, just do kind of the cool, fun stuff. You know, I had friends that worked at PA, as PAs in the live events department, and that was really intense and crazy. I got to come and just show up for the fun rehearsals and like be like, oh my God, this is so cool. Hi, Juliana. 
I remember one time specifically, I was so obsessed with her. So obsessed. And one time I think we were, it was the rehearsal for the Grammys. I can still picture it where they still have the Grammys to this day. And I was standing there as an intern with my little um, card around my neck, you know, whoever I was supposed to be. And we're all standing there. And Juliana was pretending to do her things on screen. And she made a joke. I have no idea what it was, um, but I laughed. Juliana Rancic is making a joke. I'm standing right there. I'm laughing. Nobody else laughed, you guys. I've never been so terrified in my entire life. She turned and looked at me. Everybody probably was looking at me, and I was terrified. However, looking terrified, I must have also looked um, incredibly like, Oh God, Juliana, you're my, you're my God, Juliana. And she could probably sense that on my face and my fear and see that I was genuinely laughing at her out of like love and admiration. <laughs> and, um, and then she smiled at me and it was, it was all good. I remember one time too, my now husband, Farmer John was in town for one of these rehearsals and he got to do the thing where you pretend to be a celebrity and he, you know, stood up with her and shook her hand and all that. And he's just like, oh my God, her, she's so small. Her hand is so small. <laughs> and it just were these cool little moments. You know, we didn't get a lot of time with the on-camera people or get to really see them since I wasn't working in E! News down on the main floor of the building. We were way up on the fourth floor. Uh, that was kind of my only time to really be amongst the people who were doing what I wanted to do right? Really overseeing, like seeing their life, watching Juliana pull up in her black town car and being like, oh my God, that's going to be me. You guys, all they have to do is like see me standing right here. Or like, maybe I can pretend to be her. Maybe in rehearsals, they're going to need me to stand in for her, which I don't know if I was just wishing for that so hard. Or do I vaguely remember that that actually happened once? <laughs> I was really big on manifestation and visualization and making sure that things happened back then. And I think part of that and, and how, I, how I came to this next step is that I eventually became the person who helped organize those rehearsals uh, later on, many, many months into my tenure, it's probably about the next year. After my internship, I had actually gotten hired as the assistant to the executive producer of E! True Hollywood Story. So I had my job and I was there. And by the next award show season, I was the one organizing those rehearsals, you know, um, printing off the pieces of paper with every all the nominees' names on them and taking my little hole punch and putting the yarns on so everybody could stand around. <laughs> There's a great picture of me on the Grammys carpet with all of those signs. I'm like holding all of those signs in my hand. I got my e-press lanyard on and my big old binder. <laughs> and I just look so like, well, happy, first of all, like I'm like I'm dying and think I'm the coolest person on earth. Um, and just also like such like a young professional. You know, I look at those now and I'm like, wow, you were really doing it. We were doing the thing. There was so much cool stuff. It wasn't just the red carpets and seeing celebrities come in every single day, um, which definitely was a thing. You know, everybody from like, I remember when the Jonas Brothers showed up one day, that was the craziest thing I'd ever seen in my life. They were doing some special thing on E! News. And then I believe they performed outside and we all watched from the balconies of the building as all these teenage girls just ran screaming after their car. And um, and then when the new kids on the block came in for an interview with Ryan Seacrest at his radio show, which was in the same building, I remember all the women that were older than me, <laughs> like probably how old I am now, acting in the same way and just remember being like, wow, this is so crazy. Like this entertainment stuff, these celebrities, it's, it's a frenzy. It was every single day. And another of the cool things that we got, you know, the pay wasn't great. Okay. Once I got hired, when I was working, when I was working as an intern, working for free, of course, and I think it was supposed to be a couple days a week, I went in it every single day and showed my dedication until I got that job uh, after seven weeks, actually, of only being an intern is when the woman who was su supervising me, the assistant of the department, left. And she was like, I want you to take my job. And I was like, I want me to take your job, too. <laughs> so I did. And there were a lot of cool things that came along with it. Uh, pay and benefits were not one of them. So you didn't get health benefits or anything uh, for the first, it was six months if you worked continuously, but then it was a year if you were freelance. And back then, almost everyone who worked there was considered freelance. That's how they got around giving people those benefits that we all wanted. So after a year, I did get benefits. But when I first started, I was making $12.50 an hour. 
I should probably be embarrassed to say that, but I'm not. So I was taking home less. It was right under, it was like $398 a week or something like that. You guys, I, I don't, um, I, that baffles my mind now, of course. And I was getting some help from my parents, of course, because how could you not? And they've always kind of been there for me. And we're very, very supportive. My boyfriend at the time, husband now, too, also, you know, he was really supportive of me being there, but it was hard. And I lived in this tiny apartment that was disgusting. After I moved out of the really nice place, I obviously couldn't stay there and pay thousands of dollars every month once I knew that I was going to be staying in Los Angeles and working at E! Entertainment and making almost not quite $400 a week. I moved into a tiny little, it's not even a studio, it's called a bachelor apartment. That's when it doesn't even have a kitchen. You guys, it was just like, like a rectangle with a tiny bathroom and a closet. And I had an air mattress on the floor and a TV. And that was it. And I loved it. It was disgusting. There may or may not have been, okay, there weren't not bugs. Let's just say that. There weren't not a line of ants that came marching across my laptop one night as I was trying to work. And there definitely was also not any air conditioning, but I was just glad to be there. It was a few blocks from the studio. And once I knew I wasn't going to be making a whole lot of money, that $850 $850 in rent or something a month uh, seemed seemed scary, right? But we got lots of other perks for working at E. You know, uh, there were these cool, they called them the summer block parties. And every year they would have a huge name artist come in and perform right like in the middle of the square, in the middle of the building outside. And they would set up a huge stage and there would be food and alcohol and everybody would just go crazy and get drunk and be silly together. Remember, remember, most of us were in our 20s at this time and in Hollywood and NERD, Pharrell is on stage right in front of us. I remember one of the PAs like got up on stage and was dancing with him. It was that kind of a vibe. Like, is this even a job? Well, we weren't making that much money and we weren't getting benefits. So <laughs> was it even really a job? But again, there's so many positive fun things to talk about. And another one that stands out in my mind was from this red carpet period. You know, as interns, they really wanted to hook you. They knew we all wanted to get that job there, but that there wasn't a whole lot of promise once that happened. So they hooked us with stuff like the summer block parties. And then also, if you guys remember, after award shows, like they would do all their red carpet stuff leading up to it, the award show would be on, and then there would be the E after party. So for my first year there for the biggest award show, the Academy Awards, the Oscars, E sets up camp at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, which to this day is my favorite hotel. It's the place I go and stay from all these cool memories that I created um, working there when it was the Oscars. And, you know, E takes over the whole pool area. And um, we had a whole ballroom upstairs. And one of the things that they did was this really cool after party with all the hosts where they would talk about the award show and talk about who won and talk about the fashion. And of course they needed background extras to make it look like a real after party, right? So all of us back then, I think that I did have my job then. I was still hanging out with the other interns. So we had no money. I remember I went to BB and spent more money on a dress than I had ever spent on clothes in my entire life and and more than I definitely had uh, and bought this dress to wear to the E after party for the Oscars. And um, we all just kind of got to sit around and watch it all happen around us, watch the hosts do their thing, uh, take pictures with the hosts. I think I still have a DVD copy of that after party somewhere. I think that, you know, I, I flashed up on screen in the background like three times or something. And I would go after, after I ordered the DVD at work, which we weren't supposed to do, but they would give you a copy of stuff that was from the database if you asked for it, because you were supposed to need it for your job. I took that thing home and I would watch it all the time. Like, there I am, there I am, there I am. I was on E Red Carpet Award Show thing, which is very misleading. But I was just so thrilled with my whole experience for starting out there. And, um, you know, I worked there for a good two and a half years. There were ups and downs. I had the same job the whole time as the assistant to the executive producer of E! True Hollywood Story, who was just an absolute powerhouse. She was cool. She treated me very, very well. Um, Let's just call her S. S treated me so well. She was I think that she had her 40, her 41st birthday party right when I first started being her assistant. And one of my jobs was to throw her a birthday party. My new boss 
uh, when I don't even have a car. And I remember um, stealing a cart from Ralph's and um, drive and like, you know, carting it all the way down Wilshire Boulevard to the E studio. And that cart sat in the, the THS stock room for, for years because I couldn't take it back. But um, so I threw her through her this party. That was one of the first things I had to do. She was very, very kind to me. But again, these are, are realizations I'm having now as an older woman. Her, I think, was very hard for her to know how to play stuff as a woman in an executive position. Right. If she was too hard, she was being a bee. Right. What a bitch. If she was too soft, she people could, you know, steamroll right over her. And um, I. I, f I feel like I saw I saw more of that. I kind of was able to see her kind of struggle behind the scenes with that. I remember a time when there were layoffs and everybody knew, you know, you get that call to your office, to your desk, and you're going to S's office to get told that you don't have a job anymore. And she would call me first and say, call so-and-so. I'm getting a pit in my stomach right now just thinking about it. And and I know that it was, that kind of stuff was so difficult for her too, but you can't show that, right? And I just remember always thinking like, why does everyone say she's so mean or she's so terrible or she's so tough? Because she wasn't that way with me. We had to have a closer relationship because I was her assistant. Um, and and I just I never forgot that just how difficult it really is for a woman to be in a leadership position. I don't think anything has really changed since 2008. And she also let me come to all the meetings and stuff. So I got to sit in on, on meetings where they would talk about, you know, which celebrities are cooperating with us. You know, who's going to do an E! True Hollywood story who maybe um, there were a lot of celebrities who didn't like the connotation of that. They thought True Hollywood story meant that it was like a negative thing that you had a downfall or something. So then we started calling some of them E! Specials. It was like E! Special, Christina Aguilera, or, you know, E! Special, Selena Gomez. Those were some of the ones we did while I was there. Um, and so I got to kind of be privy to these conversations of like, well, Will and Jada Smith don't want anything to do with us. So we're going to make that a true Hollywood story and just talk to all the people who um, they don't like anymore, right? Like you're not going to get their friends and family to sit down if it's not an official thing that they're cooperating with. So being able to hear all of that stuff that went on with managers and, and agents and celebrities, again, lessons learned. I remember another situation where... Uh, one of the things that we were working on, there was a huge A-list movie star and his wife also was an actress. She has been very successful to her own right as an actress and a producer. And at the time she was helping produce the, the piece that we were making. And there was some letter or something that went out to all the producers and it wasn't addressed to her. There was something where she had really gotten slighted by the network. Um, and she was upset about it. And we had to have a whole meeting about making sure that we, you know, treat this woman with the same respect as, as everybody on the production. And there was such eye rolling back then, right? It was like, oh, this woman thinks she's a big deal. She thinks she needs to be treated like a producer too and blah, blah, blah. And now, and I, and I jumped right on with that for like 10 years. I was like, oh, that woman, oh, she's got such a big ego. Oh, what was her problem? Well, I listen to her podcast now all the time. <laughs> But um, I, I understand now that a woman has to fight to get that respect. And when you're not, you need to speak up. Uh, and, and being in the position as an A-list actor's wife, she was able to do that. And she very well should stand up so that the next time a female producer gets slighted, they, maybe they don't, right? Because this woman spoke up. So it was, it was just kind of mind-blowing the things that I was hearing in the meetings and behind the scenes just because when I didn't work there before, you know, when I was younger in college, just wanting to be there so bad and wondering what was going on and, and what's the real story with so-and-so and what is this person like? We have such a better look now into the, the private lives of celebrities and, uh, you know, what it's like behind the scenes when they're filming or their relationships with other celebrities now because they can tell us they can get on their own social media or, you know, they make their own their own videos and stuff. Back then, we just we, you didn't know who people were. And, and I just was so hungry for any little tidbit of anything. Um, S, my boss, also had 
some things going on while I was working there where she was gone for long periods of time. Uh, I remember once she got in an accident and was really hurt, which is something that happens to a lot of people in LA. Um, and then another time we didn't know what was happening. And then she ended up having a baby. <laughs> That's what she was doing. She was off like trying to get pregnant, which I thought was really cool. And so LA back then, right? But she was gone for like a month at a time, a few times. And so I didn't have a whole lot to do. I was her assistant. I was still taking care of the department and like, you know, ordering the office supplies and all that. That made me very popular. You know, people love when you get them a pink stapler or that kind of fun stuff. Okay. I love the pink staplers. <laughs> I was also in charge of the bottled waters and making, you know, you're only supposed to get one a day. It was a whole thing. It made me very popular amongst the people when you can get them things. And so when S was gone, I didn't have a lot to do. I spent that time Juliana stalking, uh, which pretty much just meant trying to figure out a fake reason to go down to the studio or the first floor or near the near, near the mail room or wherever it was to try to like spot Juliana or hear her talking. What is she talking about? What is she doing? You know, are they filming Juliana and Bill? <laughs> oh, there was there was a lot of that. Me just looking who was around and and prancing around trying to get the scoop, which there was no, you know, nowhere to share that or anything to do with or really even anyone to tell. I think nowadays people would, you know, start a TikTok and tell all their stories. But that's just not the way it was back then. That was how I got the position actually uh, organizing the red carpet rehearsals and stuff is because I wasn't there and probably people saw me prancing around and Juliana was probably like, why is that girl standing here every freaking time I turn around, get her something to do. So they did. <laughs> I worked there for two and a half years until the promise of being on reality TV <laughs> took me away to bartending on the Sunset Strip. That is another story entirely, probably episode two. But it was an absolutely incredible experience. I met some of my best friends who would be my best friends all throughout my time in L.A. But after a while, even all that cool stuff that were once in a lifetime experiences, things that I was dying to do before I was there, of course, become kind of mundane and, and lackluster. They also had a policy where they would not let employees audition for on-air spots. That's what they told us, of course. It was just to keep people from being like, I'm going to be the next Juliana. And there was really a stigma there, too, about that. I'm like, oh, you think you're going to be on camera? We're all trying to make this, like, make these productions. Like, come on, grow up. And my, uh, my boss, S, especially, was like, I think, trying to help me in kind of, like, making sure I curb that. Like, let's not tell everybody that we're trying to be on camera. Of course, now I'm like, that's so lame. I was so cheesy. But also that kind of attitude is what had me just start my own red carpet outlet, just start Christy reports and hop onto YouTube and try to get onto red carpets. So I am so incredibly grateful for my experience at E for the fact that that's what took me to Los Angeles in the first place and how I was able to stay there initially. I thought I was never going to leave and I was there for 14 years, 14 years worth of stuff to spill right here. So gosh, it's so much fun to look back. And I'm sure that when I go and pull some pictures for this, I'll think of even some more fun stuff, which I'll share on social media. So Thank you guys so much for hanging out and reminiscing with me. Like I said, I think next week we are going to talk about bartending on the Sunset Strip, which doesn't sound that exciting until I say bartending at the restaurant that had the first ever restaurant reality show. Yes, before Vanderpump Rules, there was another one. Do you know what it was? Do your research and uh, we'll talk next week. Thank you so, so, so very much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and please also check out, uh, you can watch this on YouTube or listen wherever you get your podcasts and I really appreciate it. See you next time. Bye.